Uh, our capstone project was the design and installation of the Greenfield Mini Pivot, which you can see over there. The goal of our group was uh, create a fully functional irrigation mini pivot to be used for teaching and produce funds for the Ag Met Club. Uh, they're on one of the irrigated land. And um, to part of getting this goal, we had a few things that had to take care of. First off, they had to size our pipe and pump, come back, size the wire, and generate our power supply. And we had to pour the concrete pads. And then actually do installation of the pipe and wire. And then we installed the pivot, the pump, and all its components in the generator. All right, for the pipe sizing, um, we went to the chart and found that we needed a two inch pipe and uh, roof 35 um, PSI to operate properly. Um, we got 440 foot of pipe, total head loss of uh, 134 feet. And um, after we ran the system, we found out that there's uh, 40. Um, one PSI there, 51 PSI there, and 41 PSI here. So we have 10 uh, PSI loss in our uh, pipe, and we need 51 gallons a minute. And here's a picture of the pump curve for our two horsepower uh, road pump. And our, this is how we size our wire. Uh, our pivot required 24.3 amps, and our pump required 17.6 amps, and the total system required 20.9 amps. Uh, and we ran five strands of wire from the pivot to the generator and then five strands from the generator onto the pump and we had a 4% voltage drop loss. And you might be looking at the 20.9 amps for the pump and or the 17.6 and wondering why it's so high and that's the maximum service factor for the pump. When you turn it on it's going to require more amperage and our pump motor is actually a little bit bigger than two horsepower so if you put the pump at full capacity it's the most amperage it'll draw is 17.6 so that's what we sized it for. When it's running it only uses probably about eight. Yeah, we started off we had a 20 amp breaker for the pump and it would blow the breaker I mean uh, flip the breaker and we couldn't figure out why so that's what it was whenever you turn the pump on and it had a spike in amps it would flip the breaker so we had to go get a, a 30 amp breaker just to run the pump and, and we got it in our breaker box. Uh, here's the plan as we uh, went through and assembled the pivot. We first of all we poured all our concrete pads and uh, laid the pivot out on the ground and got it assembled. We stood it up with uh, the same little tractor and boom that we have at McAdams. Um, we installed the pump, which we'll show you in a minute. It's right over there on the old Seneca River channel. Um, and we built the generator shed to what supplies the power to the pump and the uh, pivot. And Step, last step, we uh, ran our system and uh, troubleshot some wiring issues that we had, like I told you earlier, um, with the breaker, and uh, we had some uh, long fuses and stuff that we had to come up with and fix, and um, an eight pin relay that we uh, had to uh, get to install in the control box, which we'll show you uh, later. Uh, here's a few pictures of, of the pivot as we went and got it. We got it from WP Law in Lexington. Uh, just you know a few pictures as we uh, went through the whole process this semester. Uh, this is where we formed up our concrete pad at the pivot. Uh, we got a rebar grid and four anchor bolts. Um, we have the concrete is uh, deeper in each of the corners to help uh, anchor the pivot. Uh, this is shown all of us you know pouring the concrete the same day that uh, Christian's group poured their concrete. We all got our concrete on the same truck and uh, poured the same day to save on some uh, costs. This shows you earlier how uh, we had the, the pivot laid out on the ground before we actually put it together and uh, stood it up. We had it all laid out to make sure all our uh, components were together and, and the right uh, truss rods and bars. Uh, this is again just showing us picking up all the truss rods and everything. Um, yeah, just more of us putting the span up together. We put it all together on the ground and then we stood it up afterwards. Just putting it all together. We had to put a, thing, a whole thing together, every bolt. There. That's the span laying on the ground before we stood it up. Next was we picked up the end tower or the end of the uh, span and put the uh, tower up under with the wheels attached to it. And some more pictures of us picking it up with the tractor. That's the, uh, another picture of the tractor at the uh, very end tower, picking up the end tower, picked the end tower up, put the uh, tires and all on it before we actually connected to the pivot point at the pad. 
That's the Thomas working on the top, putting the truss rods on. Um, this is a, a shot of Joe where we actually trenched in our electrical wire and, and, and pipe from the uh, generator here all the way to the uh, pivot point and to our pump, which is right through here. We'll show you shortly. Digging a hole. The connect, uh, put the connection to the, uh, from the pipe to the pivot. That's why I threw the lay pipe and the wire. This is our wire going from the uh, generator to the pivot and the generator to the pump. That's us laying pipe. That's laying pipe. That's our pad for our pump, just right up there. That's the completed pump station with uh, your electrical conduit coming in, your water pipe coming out, and your uh, inlet from the hose from the uh, old Seneca River channel. I mean, the significance of this is just it's going to be a really good teaching tool for future classes. You're going to be able to show a lot of principles, obviously, for irrigation classes, but also a lot of um, other courses that we can teach here, um, 206, 205, um, things like that. It's also going to be a fundraising opportunity for us to go crops here and sell the community. Um, and teach um, some of the plant courses and incorporate some of the plant courses that we have to take as well. And this is something, this is an overview of the budget. Um, I'm not going to go through number by number what the budget was. Um, we ended up coming out about 12% under budget. Um, the sources from our budget come from um, several different sources. Uh, we got some funds for student government trade inventory and our caps and funds. Um, but at the end of the day we ended up coming 12% under. Um, originally we were going to go through a um, an overhead power source um, from one of these power lines end up not working out, so we end up going through generation. So future plans are to come off, uh, get power from this power source that's coming overhead here. Um, we've got some construction plans down here at the lift station, so this area's gonna change a little bit. Um, and so it wasn't in our best interest to go ahead and, and drop power through here. Uh, so we kind of have a temporary means of power source right now. Um, the future plans are to have a more permanent source of power. Well, we were able to, um, as you can see, we got our pivot done on time, and wait a few minutes here, you'll see that actually does work. And uh, just kind of, you know, everything, well, our calculations, it all came out to be pretty true. Um, the whole system runs as expected. You know, our PSI loss was pretty close to what we calculated. Our end guns right on spot. So overall, um, everything came out the way it should, and uh, hopefully, y'all enjoy it. Uh, Y'all want to follow me? Well, I'll take you back here and show you the phone. Do you want to go ahead and do questions to wrap up the timeline? That was the way the bears were coming to get Everybody can see this is our two horsepower for the rope pump um, discharge. We put a plug in to use this bucket to fill it up with uh, water to prime it. Uh, we put a pressure gauge and a check valve in to reduce the backflow of water coming from the pivot. Um, this is our suction line. It goes 40 feet out into the canal with a 20 foot float to keep it off the bottom. Foot valve on the end to um, prevent trash from coming up the suction line. And it also serves as a check valve. Um, like I said, it's two horsepower, 240 volts, single phase. Um, irrigation pump. So, well, that puts out uh, 51 psi and about 55 gallons a minute. So. Well, I'm going to crank it up and then we can all walk over here and show you the control box and the actual pivot and, and watch it work. After I crank up the generator, we can all walk over there. Um, also, in this generator shed, we have a breaker box which is like safety in case something shorts out or whatever. And it also serves as a junction box so we can have one pigtail to go from the generator to power to both the pump and the pivot. Um, we also have a pump start relay in there which allows a 120, um, 120 volt signal from the pivot control panel to come to a relay here that will cut the pump on. So you can run the pivot without water going through it and I can turn the switch at the pivot and then it will cut the pump on when I'm ready for water. This side of our control panel for our pivot, uh, basically turn the power on, which brings the power from the generator, uh, turn the system on, start, you have a forward or reverse option to make it run clockwise or counterclockwise, and this button right here, wet or dry, that 
is what sends the signal to the pump to cut on. So um, this dial in the middle, that's basically how you determine how much water you want on the ground. You speed it up or slow it down, and that's how you uh, determine how wet you're actually making the field. Um, our pivot is 110 feet long. Uh, the end gun shoots 55 feet. Um, we have 42 PSI here at the pivot, which is right where we were anticipating it was going to be. And, uh, I might want to back up a little bit if you want to. Is that a leak? No, 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 it's 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 got, to, it's got to really fill the system up before you know the sprinklers come on and it'll stop. And it leaks a little bit around here, but it's because it hadn't made a full Four revolution to pack grease in there yet. We had all, all the way around right here. So that's where like, I know we cut it off all the water drains out of there. What bolt is running the motor out there? <coughs> 90 volts DC. It's been a little it's got early, a transformer yeah. that takes it from 240 yeah, DC, I guess. The sprinkler's not going yet. There's two different switches. You can make it go. What were y'all's biggest challenges in there? Were they, were they academic or logistical or what? We had no um, equipment. Our biggest problem, I guess, we really had was getting stuff lined up uh, so we could actually start working. Concrete held us back about a month. But then after that, uh, we put it all together. And really the only problem we had was we were missing one relay and two fuses. So we ended up figuring out what they were and got taken care of. That was my relay. Damn. <laughs> Let it rain.